Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Games Digital Comp video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Intel, specifically the company teasing their own discrete graphics card, which will arrive in the year 2020. And this was actually on the company's new Twitter account, which is Intel Graphics. Intel promises that they will set their graphics free. Now, the short trailer that was released doesn't really reveal too much, so you certainly can't see, for example, what the specifications of, of this card are. But this is, of course, going to be Arctic Sound, which is one of the new generation of GPUs that uh, Intel are working on, followed shortly thereafter by uh, Jupiter Sounds. So, of course, Intel's generation of GPUs so far are on generation 9.5. Now, we can see this in, for example, the Coffee Lake range of processors. Then we'll see the next generation in uh, Cannon Lake and so on and so on. We first had an inkling that Intel were getting serious again about their own discrete graphics card when they poached Raja Kodori, who of course was former head of RTG, Radeon Technologies Group, and he went over to Intel, and he was shortly joined by Chris Hook as well. And of course, Intel have been steadily growing their team over there at their graphics division, and it's clear that the company are here to play in the year 2020. The last time Intel tried a discrete GPU, and I put GPU in a very loose sense, was Project Larrabee which went under multiple iterations of the company, but was very different from what you would see from, let's say, NVIDIA or AMD, either at the time or since. It was based on an x86 instruction set, and rather having a lot of fixed function instructions on the GPU, instead it was very software driven. Uh, and the car just never really took off, the project never really took off, and they didn't really optimize it to the state that it should possibly have been in. And because they continue to need to justify the project's existence over there at Intel, and because the project continued to morph into different things, it never really was optimized or perhaps reached its full potential. But fast forward to 2018, and Intel clearly see a gap in the market that perhaps they want to fill. The fact of the matter is, GPUs are very lucrative as a business. You can see as well that Intel are definitely moving towards improving their graphics architecture. For example, we've seen various changes in their graphics drivers recently. Uh, earlier this year, you'll have noticed that Intel released an update. And this update allows their driver functionality to behave very similar to, let's say, uh, GeForce Experience, where it will automatically optimize in-game settings for your specific hardware. How many people, though, will jump ship from NVIDIA or AMD to Camp Intel? I think, naturally, the answer to that is it depends on pricing and performance. My personal opinion, and who knows, I could be wrong, is that I think Arctic Sound is going to be on the cheaper end of things. I think that it's going to be more a mid-range card. It might be a very similar strategy to what we see Raja Kodori employ with Polaris when he was working at AMD. And you might also say, well, are we even certain it is that type of card? Are we even certain it does do gaming? Well, there is a lot of mention right now about pushing pixels, about improving pixel performance. Of course, you could certainly say that that could be anything from CAD-based rendering to, I don't know, producing the new Avatar movie. And those are all possible theories, but it does seem combined uh, combined with the trailer and the fact that uh, Intel have been improving their graphics drivers, at least to me, that there's a good chance we're going to see this improve, uh, sorry, aim at the gaming segment, and most likely, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see it in the professional segment as well. And moving over to another piece of Intel news, and this concerns the Coffee Lake Refresh, which is being reported to launch in October. This concerns the fact that the 9900 and 9700K processors will indeed be soldered. So we're looking at STIM. So that stands for Solder Thermal Interface Material. And according to slides that videocards.com have attained, the 9700K, the 9900K have definitely been con uh, confirmed to be soldered, but it's unsure whether the 9600K is going to be soldered. And we also have further confirmation that yes, the 9900K is going to be eight core 16 threads up to five gigahertz for just a couple of threads. But the 9700K and 9600K do not have hyper threading. 
So, for example, the 9700K is going to just have eight processor cores. There is no hyper-threading there. Naturally, hyper-threading, much like SMT on AMD's Ryzen, doesn't necessarily equate to a drastic bump in performance. It does really depend on the application. You can either have basically zero performance increase, or you can have 20% performance increase, 30% performance increase, 40% performance increase, and sometimes rarely it can get closer to 50%. As I said, it really does depend upon the application itself and also other things like what you've got going on on your system. But either way, I do really want to test out what, let's say, the 9700K will perform like against the 8700K. And it's going to be very curious to see how exactly Intel managed to position these pr uh, processes in terms of pricing as well. Especially if AMD do what I think many people suspect they will do, and that is cut the prices of the current Ryzen 2 series of processors. Are they going to launch the 2800X processors? Mm, I'm still a little suspicious about that. They have said that they might do that very same thing, but I don't know how much room they've got left in the tank. They can't increase the processor core count, so almost certainly the thing they're going to have to rely on is pure clock speed. And two or three hundred megahertz for a price premium, it may just be that they say it's not really worth it. Let's just hold fire, compete in the pricing game, compete in the chipset game, compete in the features game, and then do the best we can. And then when the next generation of Zen processor architecture launches, we, of course, that's known as Zen 2, which is going to be based on 7nm then things can be very different and we can increase the core count, we can increase clock speed and so on and so on. From what we're hearing, September is going to be the point where we actually learn more about the pricing and performance of these chips and then they will launch around a month after that. But ultimately, I think a lot of the upgrades for the Coffee Lake Refresh are going to really rely on the fact that, yes, they have a higher clock speed and, of course, they're using Stim. That soldered uh, interface could certainly increase the overclockability of these chips. <laughs> there is also that skeptical part of me as well that's saying to himself, well, gee, Intel, I wonder why you're going back to solder. After all, did you say that that decreases the life expectancy of the chip because it can crack? So why are you doing that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, we're going to finish the video off with ARM. ARM have released a product roadmap, and according to the product roadmap, we could see the A76, which is a sub 5 watt part, actually compete against some of Intel's 15 watt parts in the mobile sector. It believes that its performance will be on par with the i5-7300U. It's using the single core spec SYNT 2006 benchmark for point of comparison here. And it believes that it will continue to deliver a over 15% computer performance uplift through 2020. And once again, according to ARM themselves, the 7NM Cortex A76 powered socks will come out later this year. And we'll see around a 30-35% improvement in terms of IPC compared to the previous generation. And then we already know about the successor to this, which is known as Demius. And it's based on the ARM Dynamic IQ technology. And once again, we're going to be looking at at least a 15% increase in performance, which is going to be delivered by the end of next year. And then after that, we'll move over to Hercules. And they said that there's going to be a power and area efficiency improved by 10% as they move from 7nm to 5nm. And ARM asserts, and I quote, that the, their socks will break through the dominance of x86 and gain substantial market share in Windows laptops and Chromebooks over the next five years. I must admit, and this is from a personal perspective, I am rather biased towards x86 chips. It's not because I you know, dislike ARM processors or anything like that. It's just, I don't know, I, I think it's just because I grew up you know, looking at processors like the Pentium 2 and, and whatever else, and I was just so in awe and just so so astounded by those processes when I when I was uh, kind of having my formative computer years that there is that part of me that has rose tinted glasses towards the x86 instructions there but of course ARM as well as other companies have been making substantial progress and it really is down to companies such as Intel and AMD to prove the viability of x86 and continue to push it in low power envelopes such as mobile.
With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.